Hey everybody, in this video we will take a look at the infamous Akai animals, Rhythm Wolf, Tomcat and of course the legendary Turbo Wolf. We will try to find out if they are as bad as everyone says, how these analog machines have earned their questionable reputation and maybe we can even make them work in actual music production. This is Akai's greatest hits. The three instruments were released almost 10 years ago as what might have been intended as a less toy-like yet super affordable answer to Korg's Walker range. Oh, this is absurd. Keep in mind that this was before Uli Sims hit the market, so the announcement of the Rhythm Wolf turned quite some heads. Not being able to hear the pre-production model unveiled at Messe 2014 certainly added to the anticipation. There's, there's no audio in this particular one here. And after the release was postponed numerous times, the initial reaction to the actual product was, well, intense. Hey, what the f were you thinking, that guy? Professional reviewers tried to stay polite, but some early adopters were really, really p. It's the worst f synth you've ever seen in your life. While the four drum voices, consisting of an 808 ish subby third, aggressive noise burst, somewhat usable percussion channel and strangely pleasing old-school hi-hats are underwhelming to say the least. The 303 style mono synth is barely tunable. Even with a dedicated app and has neither the filter resonance you would want to have in your acid patterns nor the punch of a more conventional bass tone. A promising one knob per function UI doesn't deliver the sonic range one might wish for. And the built-in distortion called Howl is not exactly helpful. In defense of Wolf number 1, the build quality, pads and 32 step sequencer are surprisingly awesome and I suspect them to be the reason why the machine found its way into the live setup of Moderat. Pattern variations, fills and an easy to understand workflow. Nice! USB for computer communication, 5 pin MIDI, a gate output triggered by every sequencer step and discrete output for the synth voice are not shabby either. The last unit of the presumably first victim of toxic internet synth culture was sold at ridiculously low prices not too long after its release. Given this far from ideal market entry, you won't be surprised that the Tomcat Rhythm Wolf's less evil twin isn't so much better. Maybe on par with the original Drum Brute. I'm not a big fan of the almost comedic Psytrance kick, but there's a clap, and while the snare and hats are possibly even a little worse than the ones found on its canine sibling, the instrument comes with, well, disco toms. This obscure addition to the tonal palette of the machine with its pew and whoop envelope doesn't have the same discrete output as the Wolf's synth was, but apart from that the two machines boast an identical set of features including the chromatic sequencer. The Tabra Wolf needs no introduction, it is the king of meme sims and, online group dynamics aside, a strangely underwhelming instrument. Its rollout at Mesa 2015 was truly something else and it is closely linked to a person I honestly respect who had a few really bad days at work and was recklessly thrown into a media meat grinder by his employer. We all love Dan, fortunately it seems like the incident didn't harm his career and thank you for coining the timeless term simulated wood grain sides. Wolf number two is a fully analog polyphonic synth keyboard and its four identical voices are primitive at best. Two waveforms, a tuning parameter and resonant filter on 
envelope control is limited to decay. That's it. They can be addressed independently in mono mode. Poly mode round robins through the voices, which allows for slightly different, well, timbres for every note. And there's a unison mode that combines all four to one mid rangey tonal blob. The most interesting aspect from a sound designer's perspective, every voice comes with its own discrete output that lets you pan and process them individually. The keypad is okay, the synth is missing a mod wheel, there's not much to modulate anyway, and quite similar to its drum machine brethren, the 32 step sequencer punches above its weight. I haven't found a way to record real polyphonic motifs, but having four monophonic acid line generators might come in handy in spite of the boring tones, which can't be saved by the distortion of the howl parameter. <laughs> The synth is notoriously out of tune and the calibration procedure doesn't help much. All this is in stark contrast to the military-grade build quality and the instrument has inspired many daring mods and DIY projects. All three members of the animal family were featured in early Bad Gear episodes back in the day when I sucked at reviewing gear even more than I do now. Time to give the entire trio another listen, warts and all. <laughs> That was ugly, raw and dry as a bone. Carefully setting levels and decay times can make it work in a jam situation, but nothing you would want to hear in a real track. I wanna know if these sounds can be saved by trying every single trick in the book. this theory among Akai animal owners that the three instruments are destined to become sought after cult classics like the TB303. I have my doubts. Sure, you can make them work, because you can make everything work with the right amount of love, but chances are that you will get similar and most probably better results from other instruments. I think we have learned something today. Good digital is better than bad analog, sometimes calling in sick to work can save you from questionable internet fame and this video might just be an elaborate excuse for taking a deep dive into the strange world of Tabra Wolf memes. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment which other old school bad gear episodes deserve another look. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly vocoder shoutouts. Let's see if we can squeeze some proper vocoder sounds out of the good old wolf using Ableton's vocoder plugin and a few FX. Tier 4. <laughs> Right.
Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next month.